Um, it's kind of interesting because it's rare that you get universal agreement on things, but it was universally agreed upon that no one particularly used Main Street Cultural District. No one said it. They, it wasn't, wasn't a place that people thought of. Um, I don't think that's surprising to any of you all. I, it was, it was kind of nice to hear this kind of universal adoption of, yeah, we don't say that, so maybe we ought to have something that we do say. And, and I think one of the big conversations really kind of dug into this whole mindset of we're downtown, like we know what downtown is, but um, we need to be able to have the tools to represent that. So um, folks were very positive about downtown. They were very positive about the current momentum in downtown, um, the mix that was going on there. There was a lot of discussion about the role or lack of role of the students and how they play in downtown. And, and really, I, I don't want that to be too much of an issue with you all. I just, I, when I spoke with the board last night, I just made the point that your relationship with college students needs to be a deliberate one. It, it, don't, don't let your own self-esteem be hurt because a temporary population in a community isn't discovering you. Um, that's not what winning looks like, is working very hard to earn, a, you know, that awareness of a population that's going to turn over 25% every year. So, you know, I think one of the big things that, that I talked with the board about last night was the simple idea of make sure that you have an awareness program so that you know you have a population that's constantly turning and you have some sort of conscious effort that helps to raise awareness. Because the moment that you've done it once, you've lost 25% and you've got 25% new. So just, just be mindful of that and don't let it hurt, hurt your psyche too much. Um, the other thing I always like to do is I like to dig into some of the, the ways that the community has represented itself historically. Um, I found the hidden Ames city flag. Has anybody ever seen the Ames city flag? Um, it's the official city flag, but not the flag I think that ever flies. Golden. It's gold and black, exactly. Um, I'm pretty sure that everyone in here would know why in the world, I, even if it looked different, it was kind of like, okay, who, who was responsible for that? Um, yeah, don't do contests, okay? Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting just to kind of see... Um, the official city flag, uh, some old imagery that kind of came out from the high school and everything. But the thing that really inspired all of the recommendations today is, is this really fancy woman holding a, a giant ear. No, I'm just kidding. This is, this is not at all the inspiration. But I, I think that, um, you know, it, it's kind of interesting the things that you come across when you're digging into the identity of a community. So this literally... Um, this is an album cover from a, a song um, from the 1930s, I think. So obviously one of the biggest things, though, that we came across was the very, very well-implemented community brand. Um, I do this kind of work all over the country. I'm very, very impressed with how this has been implemented and also pleased with how well it has lived. You know, it's a, an eight-year-old program. Um, you guys have done a, a good job of rolling it out. Um, in a typical dynamic, you have a situation where you had multiple organizational partners, and then you had additional partners that came on board after the fact with the, the school district and things like that. So um, one of the things I wanted to be mindful of with the system is I wanted to acknowledge, first of all, its existence and the the quality behind its existence, but also acknowledge what it should do and what it shouldn't do. So the last thing I wanted to come in and present was some sort of idea of, hey, we're just going to take a, we're going to take an A and add a different color and then call it downtown. Uh, I didn't feel like that was the right way to handle it. So I think that you'll see as we go through the process how I've attempt, attempted to kind of pay tribute to this in the way that I felt like it needed to be connected, but then also introduce new look and design where I felt like that made sense as well. Um, one of the big things that I've talked about all week 
is this difference between organizational identities and the destination logos. Um, a lot of times this is not a nuance that communities focus on a lot. But one of the things when we look at a downtown district, I believe it is extremely important that our business community have access to tools that allow them to collectively build brand equity around the district. So I want to present today both an organizational logo for the organization that's currently known as the Main Street Cultural District, and I also want to introduce a logo for downtown Ames. Does that make sense? We've been talking about that over, um, over and over, so you'll kind of see how that comes together. And then finally, um, focusing in on the elements of the brand toolbox, there really are four main places where we derive connectivity in that branding message. This is overly simplified, but um, going through and, and identifying a color palette for connectivity, uh, selecting typefaces to be able to have that consistency, uh, some sort of approach to your messaging so that your tone of your messaging can have some um, consistency to it, and then also the overall look and feel of your graphics. Um, some of the things that I heard uh, from the brand values, now I will say there was a little bit of, um, of schizophrenia as it related to downtown. Everything from traditional to edgy um, and all adjectives in between. Um, and I don't necessarily think that anyone's wrong. I wouldn't necessarily describe downtown Ames as edgy. Um, and I think that's okay. I don't think that's a discredit to anyone. I do think that downtown Ames is remarkably diverse. It has a diverse offering of businesses, um, a diverse offering of, of activities and events. Um, it's inviting. And it truly, I think the, the comment that I really liked, it's the place where you connect. Like downtown actually symbolizes the place that you can actually connect with the community of Ames. And we heard that whole transition of it's kind of like as you become an older student or transition into being a grad student, this is the place that you start to come so that you don't have to be around the other students anymore. Or if you live in town, this is kind of a, almost a refuge of sorts. So it's this interesting dynamic that it plays. So um, with those, it, it kind of led me into looking at, at color palette. Color palettes in college towns are always difficult because um, you have to make some decisions and you have to decide how connected or disconnected you want to be. Um, I decided to use university colors as a basis of a four color palette, but I, I'm here to tell you that doesn't have to be the way that you decide to do it. Um, the four colors that I've landed on, I wanted something that was bright and vibrant. Um, th there's a little bit of issue when you have something from each one of these color categories. It, it starts to broad, broaden the spectrum out a little bit. Um, so I, I'm going to be honest. You could, as you look through the designs, you could decide that you want to make a conscious decision to move away from that a little bit, create a little bit of a gap between some of the messaging that comes out from CVB and some of the stuff that's a little bit more downtown specific and have that red move a little bit oranger. That would actually shrink the palette down a little bit. But again, we're not talking about rocket science. We're also not talking about the difference between it working and not working. Those are kind of the subtle nuances. And then from there, I selected a typeface that was a, a sans serif typeface. Um, a lot of people think that just because you're a historic downtown, you have to use papyrus. Um, it's not the case. I'm here to give you permission to not use, you know, an old typeface just to denote that you're old. One of the nice things about downtowns is there's a certain inference or assumption that there's going to be a historic core there. It's, a, it's a, an element that people kind of expect to be part of that, especially in a community your size. So I wanted to create something that was a little bit more content neutral. That's why I selected a sans serif. I selected one that has several different weights to it so that it allowed you to really 
customize different types of messages that you're trying to make. It allows you to whisper when you need to and yell when you need to while not introducing a lot of different type faces into the system. <clears throat> Part of the reason that I did that was whenever we deal with Main Street organizations like this, we know that they're going to be hosting a lot of events. The events are the places where accent type faces are adopted. And I'll show you some examples of what I mean there. So I wanted to keep it a little bit more contemporary and constrained so that it was a little more timeless on the organizational side so that we could be a little bit more creative on the event side. Now from the word type, this is where I leaned over to the pre-existing community brand and I used it just from the typeface as an acknowledgement as it relates to the Main Street organization. So you'll see what that means. Um, I chose not to use the, this word type for the downtown brand itself because I didn't want to cause confusion. I wanted to keep it in with that organizational identity. So all that said, that kind of leads us to the destination brand. I wanted to create a logo that was iconic, that was easy for our businesses to use and easy to expand. And somebody made the comment yesterday, I wanna, it, I'd, I'd like to see a logo that you couldn't just change the name out and it could be any other downtown. So um, that had me kind of dive into your name and how you, you know, nobody's ever let me change their name. So I had to kind of deal with Ames, you know, how can we do something with your community that can really be yours? Something that's both traditional, but also is really many different things to different people. So what I landed on was something that looks kind of like this. And I did this artistic stylized rendition of the, the name Ames, just using simple geometry, um, being able to go through and create a system that uses those kind of block letters and those shapes, it starts to do some kind of interesting things, holding it in that kind of counterlevered box. It, it kind of almost pays tribute as you collect those letters together to buildings, to a collection of items. The different colors really kind of play into the diversity of things. Um, it's a system that plays off of the color collection and the vibrancy, but it also works very, very well in one color and in reverse versions. Now, one of the other things that's nice about this is because of the boldness of the letters for Ames, they can also serve as windows into different images and textures. So you can start to build different things that happen throughout the community in different seasons into this downtown identity. And then this actually creates a platform that allows every single business downtown essentially to have a way that they can contribute their own offerings into this downtown brand. So that simple window option is a really, really good way that your business community could essentially find a way to make that logo theirs and give them a motivation to incorporate it into their own marketing. But does anybody have any questions with that so far? Does that kind of make sense? All right. Um, so... That's the downtown brand. That's the shared identity. It's the thing that, that all the businesses would have access and, and would be free to use. But then from there, we also wanted to look back at this organization. Now, I'm a big believer that association with this kind of national network of Main Street organizations makes a lot of sense. So I just, I'm recommending what I think is the common sense and, and kind of simple approach and just having the organization known as Ames Main Street. Um, it puts you on a, a level playing field with your, your peer cohorts in, in communities all across the state and the nation. And I wanted to take a simplified version of an A that was made up of four components so that it could kind of play into that four-point approach. I wanted to be real mindful that it didn't look or attempt to look like the community brand which I think is hard anytime you have kind of a pre-existing monogram. But um, I also wanted the organization to be able to exist in an economic development ar arena as an entity that truly was the growth catalyst for this district. So what I'm showing here looks like this. 
Again, bringing in those four primary colors, being able to use that to kind of address the four committee structure. Um, now you can see I use some of my own creative liberties. Um, Iowa is a state that for years um, didn't really like the National Main Street's designation of economic restructuring. So for a very long time, they referred to it as business improvement, which I think made a lot of sense. Um, they've recently gone through nationally that move from economic restructuring to economic vitality, which I'm still not really sure makes a whole lot of sense. Um, people know economic development. And I think one of the biggest things that I always try to think about is what terminology is going to get the kind of talent to volunteer for that particular task. And I feel like an economic development conversation is one that makes sense. Same thing with the organization committee. Who in the world wants to volunteer for a committee called organization? Um, I, I can make fun of that because my wife was an organization chair, um, but it's, it's just a misnomer. So that idea of outreach is something that I, I promote for people to think about. Um, you want to make sure that you're fitting into the national model, but also doing the things that are going to attract the talent that you need for your committees to be effective. Now, from there, with that Main Street organization identity, I um, always like to show how it could make its way into some collateral materials. Um, it was great. Cindy went ahead and took a stab at changing her email signature today. Um, she, she heard what everybody said over the course of the past three days, and she sent me an email a little while ago, and it had a, a big red X over the Main Street Cultural District logo, and it just said downtown Ames next to it. So, um, being able to have that professional, consistent look. Um, and I'm showing two cards here. One, obviously, a traditional business card. But then the second is actually what I call a stop-by card. It's, it's, it's a tactic that was started by police departments. And it's a leave-behind card to let people know that people stopped by. Um, oftentimes, we hear complaints from business owners that no one from Main Street ever steps foot in their business. Um, the weird thing is that business owner might not ever be in their business, yet they're still complaining about never getting that, that touch point. So by having a card like this, it gives you this opportunity to not just work for your executive director, but really arm your board as well with the opportunity to have just a, a visual leave behind every time somebody stopped by. Um, we've had some Main Street communities that have gone and taken this and literally turned it into hey, I just want to be able to leave a card behind every time I shop at a downtown business. And all the board members got a little box of these and started handing them out just to kind of amplify the awareness of the support that the organization gave for the businesses. Now, in addition to that, one of the things that we heard a lot of talk about was vibrancy and the way that Main Street helps to bring the district to life. So one of the big moves, and I, I talked about it on Tuesday, um, this move towards what they call vibrancy grants. Taking small amounts of money and being able to seed investments in bringing the downtown district to life. It sounds like Ames is doing a lot of, of different things, um, but making sure that it's being processed in people's minds the right way. So whether you're focusing in on getting colorful street furniture, bistro furniture, um, outdoor dining, I know there's a lot going on with that right now. Um, different ways for people just to engage in your public spaces, in your park spaces. For so long, we were so adamant that any kind of public infrastructure or furniture needed to be bolted down. Because I guess they're all concerned that everything's going to get stolen. I mean, okay, put a huge bench down. If we put the bench in the wrong place and people move the bench to a different place, maybe that's where the bench should have been all along. Um, there's a big move towards portability in some of those public infrastructures. Taking advantage of small spaces, this is up in Michigan, and literally a, a sidewalk that was super, super narrow, but they still found a way for outdoor dining. And even integrating things like art and mural into the, the um, horizontal landscape. I think we always think about murals going on the sides of buildings. So figuring out ways that you create um, art and vibrancy 
in all the different aspects and, and figuring out ways that people just want to engage. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm simply calling it Vibrant Aims, and, and it can just be a collection of programs and incentives that are focused on adding vibrancy so that you can have this measurable goal towards bringing the downtown district to life. In addition to that, I took a quick look to the Main Street website, um, and this literally would be like a 15-minute update to the website. The website's currently on Squarespace. It, it's relatively easy to do a couple updates, so you could just see simply by adding a, a graphic header and a colored background. At the very least, you start to bring this into the overall brand family. So it's a it's kind of a quick strike change that doesn't force you to go through a whole new site redesign. Now to me though, where the system really starts to get fun is with the brand extension. So that's where you use your colors and your typeface and your approach to graphics to um, go through and wrap your arms around all the events that go on in downtown. So I'm gonna go through these event by event and then I also wanna point out, this is a really interesting place where the lack of consistency started to shine through. You guys literally had events that were in Main Street Ames, downtown Ames, in the district. Like it was, there were so many different modifiers in those events. So um, bringing those in line. The first, uh, Dine Downtown. Now, I, I made an assumption. It, the Restaurant Week is, I'm guessing, a community wide event. It's not, it's just downtown. It's a state program. Okay, it's part of yours. Okay. Um, but this simply shows how you could do a quick, easy modifier. Um, as clever as it is to make a fork be an E, sometimes people freak out when letters are facing the wrong direction. It, it sets off the Eng inner English teacher in some folks. But again, the concept's good. You can kind of go and, and play with that from there. Um, Oktoberfest, you know, being able to have things that can be consistent from year over year while still remembering that there's a difference between your graphic identity and the overall look and the way that an event is marketed. You want the, the events to be able to look fresh year over year, but you also want certain graphic consistency. So I tend to lean towards the more simplistic side for the logo and word type, allowing you to be more creative in your marketing year to year. Art Walk, we heard great things about Art Walk and, and the impact that it had in the businesses. So again, you know, when you do an Art Walk logo, guess what it's going to have? It's going to have splashes of paint and footprints, you know? So like you, you had it right, you were doing it like everybody does it, but now it's using the colors and the typeface to fit into the system. Uh, Fourth of July, again, finding a way that you can connect back in to some of that overall look with the letters. Snow magic, again, not saying that the old one was bad. It's not. It's just giving you these opportunities to make that connectivity through the typeface, through the colors. And, and you can see Snow Magic, this is a great example where particular events, you might want to have more of an accent typeface that, that captures the, the feel of that. Um, Trick or Treat downtown, we didn't talk a lot about this event. Um, typically, when we talk about events that ring the cash registers, this is not one, ever. Um, in fact, this is... This is almost one of those events that everyone begrudgingly does um, because, you know, having hundreds of costumed children running through your, your store to get candy or whatever. Like, it, trick or treats are things that downtowns do for their community. You don't really do them necessarily to have a, a retail sales night. So, um, that doesn't mean they're wrong, it just means you have to set those expectations. Uh, the summer sidewalk sale, again, being able to create those dynamics. Um, the music walk event. You all have an interesting kind of sequence of, of events with the music walk, the art walk. Um, I think that making sure that you know which events are retail events and then find out is there actually more of a retail oriented pattern that you started to create. There was one event that I didn't touch, and I'm, I was a little confused 
by, um, is it Mingle on Main? That's part of Snow Magic. So I, I figured. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, Mingle on Main seemed like a holiday-focused extended hours campaign where Art Walk and Music Walk also seem like efforts to extend hours through kind of a cultural kind of driving people into the businesses. So one of the things that I would, I would urge you to think about is, is there some way that we can create some connectivity between this idea of the art walk, the music walk, the, the extended hours during the holidays. And, you know, I had talked about um, about what we did in Starkville, Mississippi. I think there's a huge opportunity here to take advantage of home game Sundays um, if it's a collective effort from the downtown district. I don't know whether you call it Cyclone Sundays. I don't know what it is. I don't know how you tackle it. But um, if you know that you're going to have 60,000 plus visitors staying in hotels as a captive audience with with most of the downtown currently closed on Sundays, that might be something that you want to explore. And if you explore it, it probably makes sense to string together some of those extended hours efforts so they start to feel a little bit more like a series. That makes sense. Um, DIY downtown, which we heard great things about as well, and I think that's a really, really cool event. So what you start to see now is once you have this defined approach with type and, and color, now all of a sudden, even though you're able to preserve some of the individuality of the different events, they still feel like they're coming from the same place. And it becomes a lot easier. Your marketing can have some some just overall visual consistency so people can start to earn some trust in what it is that, that's going on down there. Then from there, collateral material. Um, currently, if I wanted to go and buy a shirt or a hat celebrating Ames, Iowa, not Iowa State and not Ames High School, how difficult would it be for me, me to be able to find something to show and, and kind of connect with Ames. Near impossible. Near impossible. And that's not atypical. It's very, very typical. Um, but one of the things that I hope that can come out of this is from that downtown destination brand resource kit, when you make that available to the community and to the business community, and they apply that with their knowledge of their own customers, I hope that you'll start to see really cool products that'll start to come out, giving people that opportunity. Um, if you saw me all week, I had a baseball hat on, so I always design baseball hats because I like them and I, I would wear them. Um, and so, you know, being able to have just cool little elements there. Um, you've got some great street banners in Ames. Really, really cool. Your street banners are almost, they're almost like uh, kiosks, uh, you know, storytelling kiosks. And and I love some of those out there, the, the dinky and some of the folks that are, are featured on there. Um, but also being able to have those branded banners that make their way throughout the community, especially in some of your perpendicular nodes. So uh, you can imagine as you're driving down Lincoln Way, the presence of street banners on only the north side of those perpendiculars indicating that there is something special that you're driving past. That's going to be very, very important for downtown. And as Lincoln Way has potential major investment and redevelopment that is slated to go along with it, as much as that's going to hurt, uh, no, as much as that's going to help downtown and the community as a whole, it stands to make it even more difficult for people to know they're driving past something special. So you want to make sure that you're you're really hitting that. Now, I made a deliberate decision not to incorporate too much of this branding into wayfinding signage because the majority of that wayfinding signage really needs to be done on a city level and it needs to be consistent throughout the city. So I feel like there are plenty of opportunities with temporary signage and banners and things like that to truly introduce a good, robust brand presence without it having to necessarily make it its way into the sign at the detriment, potentially, 
to a more community-wide wayfinding system, if that makes sense. Um, again, you know, creating materials that people want to own. Typically, if you can find or you do own a shirt that relates to what aims, it probably was a shirt that you were given for free from some sort of event. I call those car wash t-shirts because they have like 8,000 logos on the back and they're pretty hideous most of the time and you only wear them when you cut the grass or paint something, you know. Um, creating things that people want to have, that they're proud to wear and they're proud to share. And then another thing that I think is really, really interesting is just understanding the concept of brand co-oping. Um, my 14-year-old daughter came and asked me for a swell bottle. And she, it was literally like she was asking me for a car. And I did not know. I was like, what? I'm confused. Why is this such a big deal? Um, well, it's because it's a $45 water bottle that apparently has fairies that live inside that <laughs> keep drinks magically cold, you know. But the thing is, it's a premium product. When she asks for a swell bottle, she doesn't want a swoosh bottle. She wants a swell bottle. She wants the logo and she wants everyone else to know that she has a swell bottle. Well, when you take premium products like that and you put your brand alongside it, you start to transfer the value that the known brand has to yours. So if Ames wanted to position itself as an outdoor recreation mecca, it would make vests that had the Ames logo next to the Patagonia logo. You know, it's the same thing that happens downtown. So being able to do some thoughtful premium products, you're probably not going to sell 300 of these. But just having small quantities make a big, big difference. And then finally, um, also being able to show how your business community could tap into it. What I did is I created an ad template where you can essentially market downtown and the business simultaneously. Um, don't try to read the words as Greek text. People always are like, what language is that in? Um, but what you start to see here is you start to see the versatility that the messaging system has, being able to highlight a chocolate shop in one ad and then turn around and look at custom jewelry and then look at, you know, dog treats. And it, it starts to be able to create this very important way that the business community actually feels that motivation to be able to tell that story of downtown Ames when they're telling their own story because if they're helping to make downtown Ames cool, then it's, it's helping everyone in the district. Does that make sense? And then one other thing that I went ahead and created for um, the organization is a, a sheet that... I, it's called How to Be a Brand Partner. And what this does is this allows Main Street not only to have those digital resources to share the brand, but also just in one page gives business owners and event organizers ideas of how they might be able to, to consider small ways. And there is no formula. It's literally, if, if, you've, if you find one thing on this list that you feel like you can do, you're now a brand partner and collectively you're all contributing value to the community. I always say that our downtown business owners are throwing an event every day and they're doing it on their own dime. So figuring out ways that you make it as easy as possible for them to take those brand resources and, and integrate them in, uh, in telling the story of downtown Ames. So that's what I was able to do since yesterday at five. Um, so it, it's kind of our first swipe at what I heard, what, what I feel like the community needs, the, some of the tools that they need. There are still quite a few things that I didn't get into, um, some of the organizational brochures and things like that. But um, at this point, I'd love to open it up for your comments and your thoughts. Does the general direction make sense? Does it? Sweet. Yeah. Good. Definitely. Thank you. Very Thank vibrant, you. And youthful, but also timeless. And, and all the colors exist. What I did as I was picking the colors 
is I, I put down the chamber blue and the city green and the school district orange and kind of set them as my parameters so that I knew that anything that I selected wasn't going to clash with those tonal qualities. And because I wanted to be mindful of those without duplicating those. That's not actually the chamber red, right? No. Okay. You mean the chamber blue? I'm sorry, CBB red. No. Okay. So no. CBB red's darker. Well, I think that here's here's where if the only thing that anybody ever sees ever is a logo and that's they don't they don't see anything else, we have failed at communicating. Um, so, you know, being able to sit there and, and feel like the whole message I, personally I think when it's put into the context, yeah, I think it's going to make sense to folks. Um, I think that you're going to have a rollout. You're going to have a period where you have to introduce it. Um, and and I think that people are going to, like, it, it'll make sense. Um, so but do you think there's so much detriment about putting a couple of thin rules in there to give you your E bump outs and a couple of slashes? I, I looked at it. And um, I, the moment that it moves away from geometric shapes, it, it's almost one of those things where it's like the moment that it stops being shapes and starts being letters, it's letters. And, and it's just it, like it, it, it definitely made it less compelling. Now, that being said, I don't actually think that the E is the problem. I definitely think that if there's anything that you'd want to see if there was a different way to do it, it'd be the S. Did you um, try, like, half circles around the edge? I didn't. I, I played around with a couple things, but I, I'm the first one to sit here and tell you. Like, if, if there's a place that I would tweak it, it's going to be in that S. It, you're, you might be exactly right. And I, I can tell you, I did not try it. If you just take the S, I mean, take the circle, split it into two, and do it on, a, on an angle... That might look great. Or and even, then, yeah, like even just like flattening out the, right the top left, top. the bottom left turn and the upper right turn, just flattening them a little bit. Right. Like keeping it one shape. Like right, 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 right. Like, yeah. Yeah. And I think we're, again, we're all on the same page. Um, I'm not going to sit there and argue that, oh, no, 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 this is perfect. Um, there's, there's definitely that tweak to be done. But the, the good news is if, like it, it, everybody can immediately jump in and start to see ways that it starts to tweak. It, it feels like that means to me that there is something kind of compelling about this simplicity. We want to make sure that it's right. We want to make sure that it works, but it feels like that kind of versatility and simplicity works. The block shapes like that make it easier for the bits to fill in. Right. The ones that you did with the, uh, the photo behind the... Yeah, the yeah. Right. Well, and I mean that it, it is context is really one of those. I, here's the thing. I, I it's my it's my opinion. And there are other there are other professionals that have a different opinion. If I'm wearing a shirt and somebody walks up to me and says, what does your shirt say? That's a good thing. You know, you don't want it to be so difficult to understand that nobody gets it. But if every now and then there's that, that kind of conversation that happens, I'm completely good with that. Um, but I, I do think there's room that we can kind of tweak that, that letter for sure. It's like this logo up here. It hit people over the head to figure out that that's an A, and they aren't very Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I think we can easily. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll play around. I mean, that's the nice thing. We could sit there and we can do a series of those variations. You can take a look at them, and as soon as you see them, you'll know what feels right. Absolutely. Yeah, I really love it. The big blocks, yeah. Yeah. I like the logos for the, the Cool. Yeah. And the, and I would see those being consistent year to year. Right. That's the intention. The intention is your event logos should provide more visual consistency. And because of the visual consistency, it allows you the wherewithal to be more dynamic in the marketing of those events. So you have different overall graphics. Your poster looks a little bit different, but that logo provides that year-over-year -year consistency. What do you think of the name? Thank you. It's just groundbreaking. <laughs> I mean, that's the whole thing. It's like it, it really... You know, nobody deserves credit for coming up with downtown Ames and Ames Main Street. But but it really is one of those things where it's like, I really think part of the reason that this community has had what they've had for so long is that simple lack of distinction between the two different tools. Because if you're trying to come up with an organization name that is also the primary marketer of the district, your challenge becomes a little bit more difficult. Uh, Susan and then uh, Crystal. Is, see any issue with the logo? Yeah. It violates our style guide. Yeah. Why? Because we are not supposed to use the city name separate um, from the mark. I'm sorry. I was wondering where it comes from, and it's trademark. Okay. Well, I mean, it, yeah. it's a brief look. Here's the thing. So I, it's not my issue. It's whether the, the partners find it an issue. Oh, I mean, how would be actually whether this is the original design? Yeah. Well, it's not yeah. Yeah. Here's the thing. I, this is actually remarkably simple. But I, I want you all to hear why I incorporated it the way that I did. I wanted to be able to show connectivity with the organization. It's a breeze to change that in to the typeface of the rest of the system. Doesn't change the value of anything. Doesn't change whether it works or whether it doesn't work. Um, it really is more on your end whether, you know, if that breaks the consistency, then we change it. I don't know what to say. I mean, I just know that we would either have to modify the style guide mm -hmm. and get partnership buy-in, or um, we would have to say, no, we don't do it that way. Is there an approval process? Or well, we've never really had to well, yeah. who, who does own it? The city? Who owns that? That I so they, like It's all very jointly owned all by the chamber CDB and the city. Okay, was it a partnership? Yes. That's bought in. Yes. So that's that's bought in. But it 
also have to then follow that full style. Right, and exactly. Yeah, you know, and I don't know if Main Street wants to do that. I think that is the most yeah. yeah. I, yeah to, but there's no saying and, that. And here's the deal, guys. Here's the deal. It started with a different font. Well, and I don't know that this is bad. No, I, I don't think it's bad. I think it's important. The, way it the, the, reason why, the, the reason why I did this is because typically when you work in a community, everything gets done in silos. And this was a visual way that I could kind of send the volley that, hey, Everybody's actually working together. If it ends up opening more doors for problem than it's worth, it's a breeze to change it to something else. But I think it's one of those things where the reason why I showed it the way I did is because I wanted you all to have this conversation. It's not, I can't tell you what right or wrong looks like. I can tell you that either one works and neither one breaks it. So, you know, it, it's, I think it's a relatively easy conversation between the partners to decide, you know what? We've got a good relationship with Main Street. Main Street is part of the chamber. Chamber's part of the system. But they're really, it just doesn't make sense for us to open up the whole of other groups that aren't affiliated the same way to try to use the word type. Yeah. And, and then you could have the library come back and say, well, we're the Ames library and they make their own organization. Right. Ames. I, I'm completely, like I say, not not for me to call, but I always like to show people assume that there's dysfunction between the organizations. So it's nice sometimes to, I feel like your system does a good job of showing that everybody's working together well. But I think Susan's concern is, and it's not just concern, I, I mean, the way she said it, it's, it's against their style guide. So... Um, There's a lot of businesses and organizations with names in their name. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You could find a font or typeface that has some of the same curves and that kind of thing that is brought back. I don't even know that. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think that that light version of the primary typeface yeah, actually looks exactly really good. Does, yeah. And it might have a point here. Well, and that's the whole thing. As long as it's not lowercase. Yeah. Or I think. It, oh, they've never seen it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the composition is going to be similar in a good way, not not like duplicate, but similar. And it's like I say, it's it's really super easy to change that. It started when I started designing it. I started with the other typeface. And as I was developing it, I was like, huh, you know, and, and again, when I go through these holistic processes with communities, I always like the idea of a word type being an element that people can have access to. And 
those different organizations could have that access for connectivity. But you all have done it in a different way, and you've done it in a very professional and consistent way. So like I say, I'll reiterate myself, like I don't want to break open the door just so Main Street can show that they're playing well if what it does is it sets the stage for too many players that would look too different and then end up degrading the value mm -hmm. of the mark. Yeah, which I think really happened. It will really happen. I mean, as much as I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I know. Like, probably maybe shouldn't. Like, how many okay. emails you call and you feel like I'm feeling like I agree. Okay. You know, that was easy enough. That primary yeah. Yeah. yeah, it still looks good. It looks really good, yeah. yeah. I feel like it's still enough of a nod without violating... Well, the nice thing is the chamber, once we do that change, the Main Street logo will also play very well in conjunction with the chamber logo, but not look like they're trying to copy one another. Very much like some of the other chamber initiatives. So the chamber has other initiatives under it that don't use... That, that brand. So it, it's kind of a, it kind of makes sense, but I, I feel like we needed to have the conversation. Mm -hmm. like the school district part of this, they have the orange, but they don't use that A. You know, they have a, their own different A. No. They, they do, do use it. that A. They use it. Yeah. They use their A. Right. Well, that's what I mean. Right. That's what I mean. Right. They break it. Yeah. 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 They use their A. Yeah. 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 Y